Hello, my Floss Tube friends. It's time for another episode. Hi, everybody, and welcome to another Fun Friday Floss Tube Weekly Update with me. I am Annie Joyfield Stitcher. I am Joyfield Stitcher both here on YouTube and over on Instagram, and this is my channel about cross stitch, knitting, and other crafty endeavors. And this is my weekly floss tube update number 94, and it is Friday, March the 5th, 2021. Oh, how is everybody doing on this awesome Friday? I'm doing pretty well. This was a long week. Um, we've had so few full weeks of school since we came back from Christmas, just for whatever reasons, that a full week feels like an eternity, um, especially this close to spring break. So we have four more school days until spring break. So um, our spring break starts next Friday. Yay! And we have um, the whole next week off. So that's exciting. So really not a whole lot in the way of life to share. Things have finally like calmed down. Um, my mom is doing great after, you know, the COVIDs and the fall and all the things. Um, Joy-filled little ones rocking third grade still. We're getting towards the end of third quarter. It's starting to make me sad that the year is almost over for her and she's going to be in fourth grade next year. Like that just seems so old and so big. Like, oh, the dog's barking at some probably cat, squirrel, bird, something in the backyard. So I apologize if you can hear that. It's not super loud, but I heard it and I was like, what in the world? Um, so yeah, I am going to share with you some of the things that I worked on this week. I'm going to share with you a tiny bit in the way of plans, like what I have coming up in the next week. And then the smallest amount of um, Joy-Filled Stashy Stash. And as always, I'll end with an Angel Kindness card. So the first thing we're going to do, because it is a viewer favorite, it is a Floss Tube friend favorite, is the virtual hugs that I give each week in my videos. So we're going to come in for our virtual hugs on this Friday. We've made it to Friday. We are here again to talk about cross stitch, to talk about stitching, and I'm super pumped. So let's come in for some hugs. Hugs, 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 hallelujah. Trademark. Trademark it. There's one hug. Mm. Second hug. Mm. And as always, give yourself a little squeeze. So, Joy-Filled Little One is at the grandparents this Friday evening enjoying herself. I have some stitching planned after I film this video, maybe even some knitting. I'm not going to be showing knitting this week. I have worked on my socks, and I have worked... Actually, I pulled back out my Lentilla Shawlette, which is a... Um, it's a variant of the Hitchhiker Style shawl. Um, but there's not really that much progress to show, and um, I have quite a bit in the way of whips to share with you. So yeah, I think where I want to start, though, is I want to talk to you about who, so a couple of admin things, administrative type things. I hate saying administrative, like I'm some kind of fancy person who has a mental store to flowers. Um, some of the business items, the non pretty related items. Although these things are pretty. Anywho, first thing, I want to say some thank yous to a few folks who uh, this week purchased me a fancy floss or two or more. Um, I have a link down in the description box. It's not mandatory. It's like awesome if you want to buy me a fancy floss. Um, it's actually a buy me a coffee link and I don't drink coffee. I say this every week. Um, those who might be new. Um, I don't drink coffee, so I changed it to buy me a fancy floss. It's just a way for you to, if you hear something you like, I share something with you you like, whatever the case may be, you decide to buy me a fancy floss. So these folks this week purchased me a fancy floss, and I just want to say thank you so much. Um, it is always okay to say I don't want to be shouted out. Um, and I typically don't say full names or how much you gave, but like this week, y'all blew me away with your generosity. So the following people, I'm going to thank everybody like with a big thank you at the end, are Kaz, Rags, Rose M, Tina H, 
Renee E. Renee, oh my gosh, I was floored. Floored. Jen R., thank you so much. Like, I appreciate so much your support, your kind words, just the sweetest things that you had to say. They're so encouraging to me. Um, I started this because I thought it would be a great way to have a record. I'm like a data person. I'm a memory keeping type person. And so this is just another way for me to track my hobby. And so having people subscribe to me, be my floss tube friends, is pretty incredible. Um, and to have over 3,000 of you hang out with me week to week, whenever you're watching this video, whether it be on a Friday night or in three weeks time, if you're as behind as I am on videos. Um, I just so appreciative. So very appreciative. So I figure let's go ahead and talk about last week's giveaways. So I give away occasionally. It's kind of been every week, but I'll take a break every now and again. I share some of my, some stitchy goodies. Um, couple of things that I ask is if you're wanting, if you're interested in any of my pasta stash or giveaways that you don't say, you know, giveaway or free or anything like that, that you fill out the link, the happy mail form uh, that's down below. It's a Google form. It allows me to have a whole spreadsheet of people with your address, like right available to me so that when I go through and I use random YouTube comment picker, I can look your, your name up based on your YouTube name. Your YouTube name could just be your name. Mine comes up as Joyfield Stitcher because that's what my YouTube name is. And I can send you something. I used my um, Happy Mail form to send out a lot of my um, Joyfield Stitcher Christmas cards. So mm -hmm. fill it out because... I want to send these things to you. And I even this week, after I beg and plead with y'all every week, I still have people that haven't filled it out. And I go to somebody else. Just so you know, my beverage in my gigantic water jug is Hint water. And it's watermelon flavor. And it's delicious. All right, so the first one that I, I had finished this last week, so I'm passing this chart on. It's hand on, Hands on Designs Deer Tier. It's part of the White Christmas series. And this is going to be sent to, I ask you to say candle. 92 people said they used candle in their sentence, which alerted me that they wanted to stitch this. It goes to Tree S. So Tree, you have a name, but you chose to have your YouTube name be Tree S. I'm not going to say your name name, but I will be submitting this in the mail to you. The second thing that I had, um, I had purchased this um, from Crazy Annie's Stitchers. And it is a freebie chart from Erica Michaels. It's a Hickory Dickory Dock. It's a 2021. I'm not going to fold it, fold it, but I'm going to try to like... So it's a cute little 2021 chart. And if you purchased the flosses, the Weeks Dye Works flosses, she sent you a printed copy of the chart in color for free. I'm passing this on to one of you. So I'd asked you to use the word dock because hickory dickory dock. 130 people said they wanted to stitch this. And it goes to, and I'm going to butcher your last name, but it's Linda Kleinenst. And I know you've watched me for quite some time. You comment quite often. So Linda Kleindenst. Watch for this to come. In the mail to you. And I'm going to actually ship it in the envelope that it came to me in. Put some new tape. Put a new shipping label. Good as gold. All right. And then um, Amy of Mystical Diamond Art sent me some of her subscription flosses. But also was so kind and generous and sent me five weeks dye works flosses. So I am going to send these to five people that I drew. What I'm going to do is just randomly put them in an envelope and stick your address on the outside. And the five folks out of the 128 that uh, used the word works in their comment are Elizabeth Wright, Addison Shea, Mary Hinton, Fran Cohen and Cynthia Johnson. So congratulations to all of you. I will be putting your week's flosses in the mail to you. Now, this week's giveaway I forgot to bring in here. So 
here's the deal. You're just going to have to take my word on this. Um, I had mentioned it in last week's video. So if you want to go back and watch last week's video, I show the whole one yard pack of the Chelsea's checks. So Priscilla and Chelsea came out um, back in the early fall, I believe, with Priscilla's Pretty Plaids. And I bought a one yard bundle from Crazy Annie's at the time. And I don't stitch Halloween. It's just something like, I think there's great Halloween charts out there. They're just not my, my jam. I could do Christmas 365 or 366 on the leap year. Um, so the, I did a giveaway where I would cut my one yard piece into four fat quarters and I gave those to four of my folks who used the word. Last week I showed that I had gotten the Chelsea's Checks, which is the new kind of gingham fabric line that they've come out with um, from Henry Glass. It's Priscilla and Chelsea of Stitching with the Housewives. I bought, I pre-ordered the one yard bundle from Fat Quarter Shop. They were beautifully wrapped and shrink wrapped and all that. And I didn't want to bust into it last week. But I said that this week I was going to be doing that same kind of giveaway where I take the black and orange Chelsea's Checks one yard cut, cut it into four fat quarters. They're quilting fat quarters. So that is an 18 by 22 inch piece. Um, and send them to four folks. So they're not with me right now. And I really don't want to edit. So if you can trust me, you can be 18, not use the word giveaway free, have filled out my Google Happy Mail form and use the word checks, C-H-E-C-K-S, not checks, like the checks mix, which is delicious, but like checks, like checks and balances, C-H-E-C-K-S, did I spell that right? C-H-E-C-K-S, my brain's a little blah, 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 blah this week, I will, it, you're going to be entered to be chosen next week, so checks for one of the fat quarters of the black and orange Chelsea's Checks finishing fabric. Got it? Awesome. Um, if you have any questions about that, feel free to put it in the description box below. But like I said, if you want to see what it looks like before you enter your word in, go check out last week's video, Floss Tube number 93. Also, please don't say free and giveaway. I think I might have said that, but not. I'm not sure. Um, so yeah, that's... I think everything administrative. If I have any life update, I'll throw it in later on. But let's get to showing some projects. How about that? I actually had a fully finished item. Yay! What is wrong with me? I'm finishing things and now fully finishing things. Which um, you could call an FFO, fully finished object, or finally finished object. Um, I ended up fully finishing arranging tools for my husband. And so last weekend we went to, and he touched it with his greasy finger right there, with his worky finger. I guess it makes sense that it's for him, it's tools. So this is arranging tools. Um, it is a pattern by Ink Circles. I stitched a little over half of it. So the level marks the center of it, and then it repeats these tools on the opposite side. So it's a very symmetrical design. I chose to stitch from the level over. On an 18 count fabric, it's a mystery die from Be Stitch Me. And we kind of went out and about to a couple of places super early when they opened because I wanted to find a frame for it. I didn't tell him what I was looking for a frame. Well, we were looking and I, I was looking for something kind of unique. And I saw this one and I thought, okay, this is way cool. It's like a deep, galvanized this folds so it'll lean and then it has um it had a paper in here and it has just a black back that folds down um I removed the paper I took and mounted the design on a piece of sticky board with some finishing tape as well like matte board with finishing tape and then I literally was like this chipboard's really cool like you can actually see the printing still of the MDF board I just left it because I think it's awesome. And so I just set this in his area where he keeps his mail and just wanted to see like if he would notice it. And he loves it. He says he's got to now get his tool area all cleaned up in his man cave so that he can find a nice place for this. I think it turned out great. I love it. Such a fun design. I am doing arranging the sewing kit for myself. 
And, um, but yeah, I found this frame at my Home Goods, which Home Goods is in the same um, chain as TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Um, there was only one of them. It was only $4.99, so it was a great deal. It does come with glass. I did put glass because he's rough with his stuff. And um, so, yeah, I think it turned out really cool. I wish I could find another one of these frames because I think they're awesome. Um, so, yeah, I got this finished. Um, that might be the last time I head to um, Home Goods anytime soon. Oh, my gosh, I have a magnet that just stuck to it because it's metal. Um, in case you are not aware, just briefly, I live in the state of Texas and my governor decided on Wednesday that we're going to end our mask mandate effective this coming Wednesday. Um, if you follow me on Instagram and you watch my Insta stories, you will see that I took a picture of myself, a selfie with a thumbs up like boomerang with my mask on at work stating that as a Texan, I believe masks are important and still will be wearing one. And what I love is that there have been several posts in our local like moms groups and things like that of, hey, can everybody tell me what places are going to still require masks? Like, because basically the governor said, I'm not going to enforce it, but businesses can decide, schools can decide, like everybody can decide their own rules. I would say the vast majority of the places I would go are continuing masks, requiring masks. I don't know if like Home Goods is. I need to look into that. I know that a lot of our small businesses, so great reason to shop small. Um, and we actually have a website. Part of our um, like tourism page called Visit Fort Worth has set up a new site section of it that shows the businesses that are requiring masks, which I think is awesome. And it was like done super like over, like immediately because they saw a need for it. So you can go and reference like, hey, is such and such place? Yes, they are. Okay, great. Because I know I will only frequent those places that are requiring them. I know that many of um, the places that are like national chains, for instance, Target is continuing to require them. Macy's continuing to require them. Costco, who started before it was a mandate, continuing to require them. I will continue to wear one. I am fully vaccinated, but I can still be a carrier. Um, obviously, my daughter's not vaccinated. My husband is not yet because it's not made it to general pop yet. We are still in the 1A, 1B. We vaccinated a lot of people, but it's still only 5% of our population in our state. Um, so, yeah, that's a little backstory of why I might not be going home goods which is kind of a bummer because it's kind of fun to just wander around in there got some new dish mats new silicone scrubby sponges for my dishes those are cool let me tell you those are awesome all right let's show some stuff I worked on all right so this is a whip that I worked on whip is work in progress and this is hands on designs a waffle lot this came in my date with my stitching january sub box from black needle society i am keeping it in the bag that came in the um, box as well i'm stitching it with the called for dmc on 20 count blush ada and i got a bunch more done um, I finished out the words. I did the two different colors of the heart and I started in on the waffle weave. So yeah, I trucked along on this quite, quite well. I love this stitch. It's super fun on the 20 count. The 20 count blush is just as Weigert. Um, I purchased it like from a seller on Etsy. I searched 20 count Ada and it came up and it's just as Weigert base. I kind of like that it's super stiff and um, it's got big holes because it's not been dyed. Um, so yeah, really enjoyed working on that. Um, I also pulled out since we, um, last year on the 29th, I started seeking solace from Long Dog Samplers for um, Aaron T. Martini Stitcher hosted a sow called hashtag Long Dog Leap Day Sow, where we started a Long Dog Samplers and had four, year, four years to finish it. Um, I pulled mine out to work on. Obviously, we didn't have a 29th of February this year, so I did work on it. I think I worked on it a couple of days. I think my goal was three days this month, and I think, I believe I got three days. Um, I believe I have officially finished the first page. 
um, and have started to move into the second page or I'm close because I started to move in colors onto the second page. So this is on 20 Count Ada from Color and Cotton in Light Brown Sugar. Um, and I love this. Oh my gosh, it's so pretty. Um, now I took the suggested Gentle Arts and I converted them to things from my stash um, that are close. So, and I'm stitching it with one thread over one square. So, and one of the biggest changes that I did is the words are in this kind of, um, I believe the words are in the same kind of reddish tone that's throughout the, throughout the pattern. And I chose to bring in a completely different color and I'm doing it in like a hot pink. Um, because why not? Why not? So that's going to be put away until closer to the end of the month. I will uh, slot it in at least on the 29th, if not maybe one more day. Um, this project had a birthday on the 1st. This is Plum Street Samplers Cereal Bowl Collection. It is Sampler Lesson 4. Um, be you to others kind and true as you would have others be to you. And I purchased this with the floss card and the finishing chenille on a stash unloading um, kind of a site. Um, it came with the floss carded. And um, this was a Stitchy Madness, March Stitchy Madness piece from last year um, that started on the 1st. It won the, it won whatever, however I was doing it last year. And this is on 25 count Ash Rose Lugana one over one. So it is tiny, 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 tiny with one strand of floss. So I got quite a bit done. Um, I kind of moved into this orangey color, the dark color. I think it's classic color works rust. So I filled in this flower, this flower, the two chimneys on the house, the ladies dress. Then I filled in, um, I started in on this color, which I think Yes, is Copper Penny, and I did her face, which is four stitches, and started in on the house. So I have a lot of fill-in on the house. I've got a lot of fill-in in, in, in the field. However, I was thinking to add texture. I might do a variation of singles, doubles, and Smyrna's, just to kind of wacky it up a bit. I have a big flower right here, and then I have words. So it's got more time on it, but I think it's so cute. Look how tiny it is. Oh my gosh. And I love the one over one. And my sheep are in Shabby Sheep, which is a fantastic floss for stitching sheep from Classic Colorworks. It is really what brought my love of Shabby Sheep. Like sh Shabby Sheep. It is now what I stitch. Pretty much any sheep that I encounter, I stitch in Shabby Sheep. Just saying, because it's so cool. It's like a white gray combo. Alrighty. So, then on the 28th, I started for Monochromatic March, um, I started Long Dog Samplers High and Dry. This is a fairly new chart, um, and I love the symmetry of it. I love the animals two by two. I love the uniqueness of the animals. So, you've got kind of like a alpaca over here. You've got a whale. You've got an elephant. You've got unicorns. You've got bunnies. You've got, I mean, uh, such a cool, it's got like a pelican, you got deer, you've got crabs down here with peop next to people. These are giant like destructo crabs next to these tiny little people. I think it's so cool. It is so cool. And I decided to do this one in Sulky White. So I purchased off of the Sulky America website, I purchased a 300 yard spool of Sulky White. And the color for Sulky White is 71, 713-1001. So it's just Sulky White. I am stitching this on a 16 count Ada from Color and Cotton in the color Blush. And I love it. And I've done so much because it's so much fun. So I started up here in a top left. This is page one's dimensions. And I've done quite a bit and I'm pretty pumped about it. Um, and I have this slotted for a couple of tasks this next week for um, Cross Stitcher and Daily 30 because I love it. This is like, I mean, it's an overwhelmingly large piece. It's not as big as other long dogs. Like it's about half the size of Pandemic. But 
there's all these different motifs and there's like this cute back stitching and it's just so fun. But I am stitching this with one strand of Silky over one square of the Ada and this is a beautiful fabric. I got this on the ready to ship from uh, Color and Cotton. And this is in a Creative Carol bag, which I love. It's like zippered with a handle and then it's got the awesome coneflower fabric. I love it. And it's got different ones. Like it's got the same coneflower pattern, but the back is the olive background and this is the dark. And it's got this super heavy duty vinyl, the awesome teal zipper. Like I just love this bag. I love my other one from her too. Um, so yeah enjoying working on that it's still on the hoop because like I said I am going to pull it back out it's a super super fun stitch all right so then we got into some March stitchy madness and the first day of March stitchy madness on my bracket I worked on my March stitchy madness 2021 which is courtesy of the awesome idea from the Steel City Stitchers who I still am binging. Like, I love their videos. They're so awesome. Um, I love that while they're each talking their different part, the others are stitching. Like, I think that's so cool. Um, I am doing a completely ink circles, Patreon exclusive charts, March Stitchy Madness. So four whips and four new starts. Four of these I already had started and four of them are new starts. The first one is a whip and it is the love bug. And this was a Patreon exclusive from April, 2020. And I have this going, I think on a piece of 18 count barn wood. No, excuse me, 16 count barn wood. Picture this plus in the called for colors. So I worked on it a bit on the first. So that's what I got in. I am still just outlining and then I'm gonna kind of go back in and coloring book style it, stitch it. So I worked on that one, and then on the second, I started one. So I started from December 2020. This is My Danish Heart. I am about one-eighth Dane, and so I loved this one. This is on a piece of Color and Cotton. It's a mystery grab bag, 14 count, and I am stitching it with Sulky White and Scarlet from Mystical Diamond Art. So... That's my palette, and this is a beautiful piece of fabric, and I am stitching with the one strand of Sulky over one square of the 14 count. It's a little bit more sparse, but I kind of like that it's a little primitive. Um, I'm still debating on how I'll do the red, if I'll do it with two strands or one. I'm not sure of that yet. So I started this one, and then I put it up to a vote on my um, Instagram, Insta Stories, and Love Bug is moving on. So Love Bug will be worked on next week after I'm done with round one, all the round ones. And this one's not going away. It's just now started and can go in my whip rotation. So then on the third, this is already a whip. And this is Shuriken, which was from July 2020. I am doing my own colorway. So these are my colors. Um, they're DMCs. And there's a lot of the new colors. Um, and so it will look kind of like a throwing star. And this is on, I think this is a 16 count. No, excuse me. This looks more like a 20 count. I don't have my, what my fabric is. Maybe it's on here. It says 16 count slate from hand dye by Stephanie. It might be. So I worked some more on the outlining of this. As you can see, I got some just in tint. Typically when I'm stitching like this on the DMC, I'll tent stitch, which is a, just do the bottom leg and then I'll come back and cross it. So this was my whip that had already been started. Done been started. Oops, I left love bug out of its bag. Back in there, love bug. Cause you're moving on. I started yesterday, a new one. Um, this is from January 2021, and this is the Eight Circles Roll Your Own, and um, this was kind of cool because um, on her Patreon, on Tracy's Patreon, she she reached out and said, "I'm working on this. Give me two DMCs that you think go well together, and the first eight to ten will end up on the chart." Well, I was one of the first eight to ten. This is mine right here, Annie, and uh, mine. 
my two colors I gave were 157 and 335, I believe. And so she created this. It's called eight circles because it's actually made of eight circles. I'm stitching this one, but I am also going to stitch this one and I want to turn it into like a little needle book kind of a thing. I don't know how the finishing is going to go, but I started this on a color and cotton 16 count and I got the whole outside outline done. Now, instead of 310 for this one, I am using color and cotton typewriter. I wanted a slightly different look. So I put this one up for vote yesterday. The voting just ended a bit ago, and this one is moving on. This is in my A Bags Plus Bendy Flip. So eight circles is moving on. So next week, Love Bug will get worked on again. Eight circles will get worked on again and they'll go up against each other. So tomorrow I have a, um, a whip that's coming out. It's, no, that's today. I still need to work on it. Here, we'll just chat plans. It's spider's play thing. This one's uh, today's. And then I'll have a new start tomorrow to uh, look at. All right, so then the last project I have to show is actually one of my whip go calls. And my goal is seven days. So after I finished four days, starting on the 28th on high and dry, I started a seven day rotation on this on this piece. And this is an I Love You More Studio um, Co sleeve with unicorns on it. Because this chart is for Joyfield Little One when I finish it. This is from Teresa Kogut. This is She Believes She Could, So She Did. It's actually called So She Did. You can find this in our Etsy shop. It is a um, PDF download. Uh, we did some color converting because, why not? Because Joyful Little One wanted to say she didn't want a black dress. She wanted a pretty variegated blue dress with pink flowers. She wanted, the hair is perfect because she's a blondie, but she wanted to bring in some more pinks and pretty. So this is my color palette. And it's on this awesome 27 count Linda. It's unnamed from Be Stitch Me. So not so good. And look at this skin shading. I'm obsessed. This is the bottom of, like, the shadow of the bottom of her arm. Um, so I started working on this yesterday. I've already put in some time this morning. Um, I was up super early, and I just worked on this a little bit this morning instead of getting on my phone. I used this for a monthly challenge from Cross Stitcher and Daily 30. And um, so, yeah. And it's slotted for at least one of the tasks this next week for Woody Woodpecker Week on the Daily 30. But I am going to be working on this a little bit more tonight. I love stitching on this Linda. It's so pretty. Um, these are some color and cottons, and I think they're beautiful. And I love the shading. I cannot wait to get into her hair. I think that since these are most of these are created from Teresa's paintings, her her own illustrations, her own art. She does a fantastic job of converting that over to cross stitch. And especially like, I didn't mess with the skin because here's one big reason. I definitely could, but one, this is gonna look like my daughter who is pale like I am with blonde hair. This came pale with blonde hair. I could stitch it again and figure out some color schemes, but this is one where one designer where I feel like she has done a lot of thought and research into making those blends happen. I've seen it when working on Prey, which is the angel that I have going from her as well. And at first I was like, how are these colors going to work? How's it going to jive? And then it just does. It's just like, ah. So anywho, I loved working on that. So plan-wise, I am going to work on that. I have spider's play thing. I'm still going through, um, I've got two more, ooh, sorry. I've got two more new starts for uh, March Stitchy Madness um, that are both the ink circles. One is Thread Chicken, which, very cool. Um, she came up with it because she literally had like this much of a five-yard skein of Weeks Dye Works. I'm using an eight-yard skein, so it will be okay. I will not probably have to play Thread Chicken. And then, <clears throat> what is my last, what is my last whip? It's on my phone. Let me tell you, because I, for some reason, cannot for the life of me remember. But I keep it on my phone. Anybody else do that? Is that just me? Okay. So, oh, duh. 
All right, so spider's plaything is today. It will go up against thread chicken tomorrow. So typically I post to my stories tomorrow even before I've started thread chicken, but since it's a Saturday, I might have already started it by the time I post it. And then my last whip is Posy Go Round, um, which is started already. And then I'm putting that up against Fourfold Bounty, which is a beautiful like gold and green Celtic looking design, which I thought was perfect for March. Um, and that's actually not all the Patreon charts. I think there's some I haven't even, that I haven't started yet. I just picked like my favorite favorites. Um, but it's, it'll be eight total. And they're all very, they're all rather small. I think the largest one is Shiriken. And that's because it's a full coverage. And I think it's like 40 by something maybe. Might be more than that. I don't know. Anyway, that being said, um, I am going to continue with March Stitchy Madness. I am, um participating in the cross stitchers and daily 30 it is a closed group i know they just um opened it up but so they might do that again here pretty soon i'm not really sure just kind of check back on it on facebook i think you can submit a request to join and when they open it up they'll review those requests um and then i am also doing 24 hours of cross stitch acrostic that is um the awesome idea of Jen Lee of Quirks and Stitches. Um, she has a great explanation of it. And I purchased her digital planner. So this month I am, it's a this or that. And so the acrostic is either plastic bags or project bags. I'm doing project bags. And so I've slotted in my pieces, the ones that I know I want to get time on or I already had planned this month. Obviously, I've got Whip Go going on, which is the awesome in invention of um, Jessie Marie of Jessie Marie Does Stuff. And so I'm somehow managed to get all of it to kind of somewhat coordinate. I don't know how that happened. It all just kind of fell in line. But anywho, let's do some stash. How about that? It's joy-filled stash stash time. It's joy-filled stash stash time. And the first piece I'm going to show you doesn't even fit in my basket. It's a beautiful project bag that I can thank Pam and Steph for introducing me to. This is from the Brass Button, and I've been coveting the bags on her um, on her Etsy page for quite some time. But I've not seen any that were just like, I must have. This one I saw, and I went, I must have. So it's a beautiful blue and mustardy gold and turquoise and white floral. And then the inside is a coordinating print. As you can see, it's quilted. The back is the uh, beautiful floral. It's got a handle, a matching blue zipper. Joyful little one goes, look, it's a button. I said, yeah, because it's brass button. She goes, oh, but it's not brass. I said, honey, it's okay. Like, don't be so nitpicky. So I think it's a beautifully made bag. It's bigger than what I typically go for. But I do have a couple of larger projects that could definitely go in here. Or I might put a couple of projects in here. Um, so yeah, I'm excited to have this in my collection. I don't foresee myself buying too many more. But I definitely, want, definitely wanted to share because I think these are beautifully made. Very reasonable bags for the quality. So yeah, um, go check out Brass Button on Etsy. All right, I do actually have two other project bags because after I shared about bags by Wendy, um, I was worried that y'all were going to go buy them all. And there were two more that I really loved and wanted, and so I did. So she sent them out like lickety split, split lightning fast, and she sent me a little thank you note that had two beautiful DMC colors that actually kind of go with the bags now that I'm looking at them. I love that she has like three different sizes. I did kind of the small size, the nine by seven size. That's one of my preferred sizes. She does like a medium size bag and then she does a fairly large bag. Not every, pa not every photo, not every fabric, that's the word I'm looking for, comes in every size. So you just kind of have to look at it. She lists them on her Instagram page. It's bags underscore by underscore Wendy, I believe. She actually posted some new ones, I think like yesterday. And I'm shocked nobody has scooped them up yet because they look good. But I'm gonna hold off because I'm gonna send her some of my fabric. So it's bags underscore by underscore. So bags underscore by underscore Wendy with an I. And so she actually did, yes, post some new bags. 
So she's got the little aliens from a Toy Story bag. I think these are super cool. Um, she found this super cute, like, camping fabric, and she did it, like, applique style on the front. So I think that's fantastic. She's a artisan for sure, and her prices are incredible. So let me just tell you. So on the alien bag, she has a 9 by 7 and then she has an 8 by 10 size. But then on some of her bags, she's got fobs. She's got grime guards. She's also got, this size is a 14 by 14. So that would fit an 11 by 11 Q-snap. Shipped super fast, packed awesomely, and I love these. This one has this these cute, um, I love turquoise, cute flowers with this kind of washed, var variegated fabric. And then it's got a beautiful pink jeweled zipper pull. And then the back is like, Kind of like batik raindrops. I love it. I love this small size. Look at how tight these corners are. The good, thick vinyl. So good. And then this one, I die. I was like, oh, it's bees. And then when I looked closer, they're batik bees. Yes, I said it. Batik bees. Then this coordinating lavender. And then look at the back. It's like this kind of variegated, washed honeycomb. Is that not perfect? And then, again... My little attention to detail child goes, it's a bee with like honey colored beads. So good. So Wendy, Wendy, I love your bags. Keep on trucking. Keep on knocking them out. I am going to be sending you some of my fabric because I just must because they're just so good. Like I look at it and I go, wow. And what's interesting is my husband knows I can make project bags. I make the sleeves. I can also make a zip bag. I don't do vinyl. I don't. And I like a vinyl bag from time to time. I love Diana's vinyl bags. I love Wendy's vinyl bags, especially since they're the smaller size. And he's like, I showed him and he goes, oh, those are good. Like he's looked at mine and he's very, he's, he's again, attention to detail. I wonder where little one got it. Anywho, long story short, go check out Bags by Wendy. I got my finishing um, pack from Lady Dot Creates. This is Fluff and Doodad's Finishing Club that is through Creative, um, no, excuse me, Crazy Annie's Crazy Stitchers. Um, this is actually the last month I'm going to get. I went through last weekend and I dropped nearly all my subs because my stash overfloweth. So I dropped my Color and Cotton from Color and Cotton subs, both of them. I don't have any more room in my Color and Cotton floss drawers. They're full. Um, and I can go on the website and buy ready to ship if there's something I just need. Um, I dropped my Be Stitch Me fabric of the month because my 20 count drawer is overflowing. I dropped my finishing club because I didn't use hardly any of the ones last year. So I need to use more before I, so I, I went through and I was like, cool, cool, cool. And I feel so good. Because, like, my budget is going to be rocking. Rocking awesome. So, anywho. Um, this, it's every other month. This is grass. No, excuse me. Green, green grass of home. So, it's this beautiful, like, bean sprouty green. It's got these copper topped pins. And some pretty finishing things. So, yeah. Um, I love this one. I don't think I have any greens yet. So, this will be nice. What is this? Hold on, let me, this is going to be crinkle, crinkle, but I want to see what this is. Oh, okay. Oh, we got a beeswax heart. Oh, it's a button. It's a button. Pardon me, it's a lavender button. Today we had um, our administrators made us a taco, uh, no, a nacho bar. I don't do cheese. I don't, I cut dairy out quite some time ago. And, um... But I've had like kind of like a taco salad. No cheese. <sighs> Something in the taco meat has got me like the stomach acids are going. So I apologize for that utterance that came out of me. Like you probably thought, oh, Joyful Little One's not here. We won't have any bodily functions. Such is life. All right. I got my uh, three all threads nest egg. 
which is Gentle Arts, and I get the 10 yard skeins. And so this is, I think this is February's. So really pretty. We're kind of in the P's, Q's, R's. Now this is my last month of getting these because again, my floss runneth over and I realized she has a Sulky subscription service. So I can get 10 spools of Sulky in order. So yes, please. Because I cannot bring myself to buy the entire case. Like even though there's like a 30% off sale going right now, I just, I don't have that money to give all at once. And so I um, think that getting them 10 at a time is going to be fantastic. All right. I joined a fantastic endeavor from, I like the word fantastic this week, from Forbidden Fiber Co. and a super cute um, project bag maker, maker. And they call it Flock Buster, the Flock Buster Club. And so they came up with, um, it's every other month. I, I pay every month, but every other month, February being the first, I get yarn. And then the alternating months, I get a project bag which I think is really cool. And so they're based on movies. So the first month came and it is a uh, beautiful gluttony sock yarn from Forbidden Fiber Co. You know I love Forbidden Fiber Co. And this month's flock buster is the Adventures of Robin Hood, the original Robin Hood back in the day. And so it came in this cute, it came in this plastic bag with a sticker from Robin Hood. And it came with this beautiful, oh my Gluttony Sock Yarn. Look at how beautiful that those greens are. Super Squish. It's the same yarn that I got for my Valentine's. And then on the back, I love that they labeled it. So it even says Robin Hood Flockbuster February 2021. So I think the other cool thing is Leanne, who is the awesome, awesome genius dyer behind Forbidden Fiber Co., is going to share some pattern suggestions for these. I don't, because I don't think I'll do socks for all of them. These aren't shouting socks to me. These are shouting like a cowl or a shawl or something like beautifully draped for fall and winter. So, got that. And then the very last thing is Color and Cotton put up a ready to ship section and they were all small cuts, 13 by 17, so fat eights. And so they were between $9 and $11 a piece, which is incredible. And great because often my projects, I don't need a full fat quarter. And um, so then I'll have like a, a fat eighth left. Excuse me, itchy nose. So the first one I got is tea leaves. And this is an 18 count. It's a beautiful neutral. This is another 18 count in snowy sky, which is a beautiful light blue and white modeled. I die. I die. 18 count in hot cocoa. Beautiful, dark, warm brown. These are all fat eights, like I said. 18 count in trade wind, which um, you can kind of see this one's a more gray. This one's a more like brighter blue. Stormy sea. And again, another, oh, this is a 16 count. And then 20 count in Witching Hour. And I think this was only $9 because they said it was flawed because it has this dark dye line down it. But here's the bottom line. I don't care. This is beautiful and I will use it. And on a 20 count, this is a pretty big project. And like when I look at it like this, I don't know that I see. I see it. But it only, it doesn't really go the whole way down. So I guess I'm not worried about it. And for $9, I was like, that's beautiful. Because it would be another one that would be great for some small chalk ones. Um, or something like that. So, super pumped. Super pumped. And even though I really don't have room in my drawers for these, um, I couldn't resist. Especially like that dark brown. This is one of the reasons why I quit. Is because, like, this needs a place. This needs a home. So, yeah. Alrighty, that's about all she wrote in terms of stitching this week. So I think it's time we share an angel kindness card. So I'm, I don't, I'm getting kind of close maybe to being a year with these, which means I'll have to find something else to share with you. 
This is Teresa Kogut's Angel Kindness cards. Uh, they come in this beautiful box. They are great, um, like, glossy cards, like note cards. And um, you can pass them along to people. I share them with you. And then I think after I've shared them all, I'm going to keep a few for myself. And then I think I might pass them on, like, pay it forward kind of style. So this one I picked because I thought it went very strongly with how I've been feeling this week. So with all of the new mask stuff and that concern and, you know, all of that, I am, you know, a teacher. I'm in a classroom every day. So anyway, I think this angel is gorgeous. I love how she's looking like meaningfully towards something. And so the saying on the back says, some days it's more difficult to find something positive. Keep looking, it's there. And so one thing that I've tried to start doing is putting a very intentional place in my weekly planner where I put something I'm grateful for. Um, I also in my weekly planner have a section um, where I put work, like work, but it's my feelings at work. And what I've noticed is this week, my feelings at work were not the most positive. And so, but then when I look at what I focused on in my moments of gratitude, they were all very much towards my family. And so I think that it's illuminating the idea that I can have more control over my thoughts, but I need to maybe look a little deeper and look at the positives even on the worst days. And so I'm trying to remind myself that it may not be the thing on the surface. I may have to keep looking and it may take me all gosh darn day, but something positive is there. And so I really love that one. I thought it was powerful. I wanted to share it with you. Um, I know not everybody makes it to this point in the video, but if you did, awesome. I hope you heard something that you loved. I hope you liked what you saw. Um, I really enjoyed my stitching this week. Like I, it, uh, it just was fulfilling this week. And I liked kind of meeting some goals and like, I like checking boxes and um, but not putting any pressure on myself. And like one night I was just super tired and I was like, you know what? I'm good. I'm not going to stitch tonight. And that was okay. I had stitched a little bit like during my lunch or I had stitched a little bit, um, early in the evening. But then when I little one went to bed, I was like, nope, I'm done. I'm going to bed too. And that was good for my soul. So find something positive. Hopefully this video is positive for you. I, I hope so. Um, that's always my intention is to put out something that is that is good. Um, good in the sense of, obviously, it's not cinematically fantastic quality. There's no editing. There's no fancy, fanciful thrills. Um, it's kind of like you get what you get. Um, but I hope that the, the general feeling you walk away with was, okay, my time was not wasted watching that. So that's my hope. Pardon me and my taco breath. Good thing you're not here. Good thing this is not smell of vision Anywho, with that, I will wish you a wonderful week ahead. I hope you get some X's in your projects or some knitting done. Whatever brings you comfort, happiness, and of course joy in this in this crazy world we're living in or this wonky world we're living in. I'm trying to retrain my brain to not say crazy. Crazy. This wonky world we are living in. And... I will say, I should say, I will sing. So long, stitch well. I'll see you soon, my friends. Goodbye. Goodbye, and I'll see you next week.